Now that you have an understanding about where to start with the issues management process, that is with a strong stakeholder focus, then we can begin to understand the process itself. While there are a number of approaches to issues management, the most straightforward is a four-step process. So in this lecture, we will introduce the essential components in issues management, the overall process itself, and then discuss scanning and strategies for managing information load. However, there are four core assumptions, that is, things we just believe are important that we make in understanding and going about issues management. First, is the assumption that issues management is an essential part to good strategic business planning. So understanding what an organization's key value proposition is, identifying stakeholders and the stakes, and then creating and implementing plans of actions for the organization is connecting all of this. Strategic business planning then asks, at what level is this occurring, and how should it occur? Second, is the assumption that organizations are responsible to someone. However, to whom the organization feels responsible will vary by industry and ethics. But it asks, what kind of a role do you think the organization should play? For example, is it about reputation, building strong positive relationships, and being good corporate citizens, or something else? Remember that our definition of issue management focuses on an organization's responsibility to be good stewards. Third, when I talk about intelligence, naturally I'm talking about information. That is, how we use information to make judgments. The assumption is without good intelligence, issues management can't do much to help the organization. Finally, an assumed part of the process is communication, where we talk about the kinds of communicative approaches that organizations take in order to manage the issues themselves. The process is always grounded by the basic campaign approach, emphasizing identifying goals and key audiences, setting key measurable objectives, developing a well-grounded strategy, and then that will let us meet our measurable objectives, and of course, measurement and evaluation. So the parts of the issues management complex are certainly not complex. It's a fairly straightforward set of process. In my judgment, that should be the case of most types of processes, so that instead of getting bogged down in an overly complicated process, we focus on the richness of information and challenging work of actually executing it effectively. The first step in effective issues management is the application of informal and formal research methods to explore the organization's environment. Here, you're collecting and organizing information. You're not actually analyzing it yet. The assumption is that a mindful scanning of the environment is a kind of insurance against surprise threats or missed opportunities. So the goal is to understand the organizational environment. And while the labels applied may vary, organizational environments are typically divided into sectors, including those like the social and sector, so public opinion and reputation, the economic from local to global levels, what economic trends, issues, and indicators are likely to affect the organization, political or regulatory, that is, are the attitudes that are shifting because of different administrations, governments, or regulatory environments. New laws in any of these levels can affect the organization and how it functions. And fourth, the competitive environment. That is, what are an organization's competitors, both direct and indirect, what are they getting up to, and what's affecting them? From a process point of view, scanning is quite straightforward. It's gathering and organizing information. However, for anyone who has ever started a new project, you know it can be really daunting. So the critical risk for people and organizations at this stage is information overload. Information overload is something that's incredibly manageable, but what is it? Very simply, it's stress-induced by receiving more information than is necessary to make a decision, or even that can be understood and digested in the time available. So any attempts to deal with it then can lead to outdated time management practices. 
We've probably all experienced this. It usually results in frustration, a to heck with it approach, sometimes groupthink, or more often in the issues management process, we end up missing a really vital piece of intelligence that would have helped our organization make a better decision. Even in organizations with active scanning processes, things can be missed. And so this is often down to an inefficient or ineffective way of dealing with the information. So I want to introduce some suggestions on managing information load, especially in the scanning and monitoring process. Managing information load is very simply about working smarter, not harder. This is one of my personal mantras. There are six factors that can help us manage infor information load with issues management. Factor one, we have to understand and practice good time management. This lays the foundation for managing information overload. If we're organized with our time, then we can set priorities. So we focus on the information needed to accomplish a task and focus on a process for doing it. There are several principles of good time management. Each of these have an impact on good issues management. First is establishing goals and setting priorities. Begin with a list of key goals within a particular time frame. Now, sometimes these are set for you, but it's the starting point. Then prioritize which comes first. Focus on the most important ones initially. Second, organize effective meetings and collective tasks. Group discussion in meetings reduces what we can accomplish. So minimizing the time that we spend in meetings and on collective tasks often maximizes our productivity. So use meetings to organize individual tasks and make key group decisions, then focus on the individual work. Third, learn to handle distasteful and difficult projects. This helps in reducing the stress of deadlines. Stress is a major factor that makes information management more difficult. And that's why it's a good idea to do the worst aspects of a project first. And finally, set up an effective filing or information organizing system. When you begin grouping information in the scanning process, you need to be able to find it again quickly. There's nothing worse than saying, I read this one thing and then not being able to find it. So if you begin scanning with the assumption that you need to look for particular types of information, make sure that you group that information accordingly. The second factor is understanding and practicing stress management. When you're feeling stressed, more information will only accelerate the feelings of panic and worry. Telephone calls, messages, personal interruptions, and vast amounts of information that you need to comb through can quickly raise the level of stress to a point that productivity deteriorates. In issues management, especially when you're working on a new project, you can often feel like there's an ocean of information and you're expected to swim across it. How to cope. There are lots of coping mechanisms with stress management, but a few suggestions. First, do a brain dump. Mean that if you have a lot of stuff on your mind, write it all down and then see what's relevant to your task and focus on that. Otherwise, put everything to the side. Second, do not multitask. If you're trying to do too many things at once, you end up not doing any of it particularly effectively. Third, limit distractions. We all know what distracts us personally. Make sure you're in an environment that does not contribute to the distractions. And fourth, take breaks. Recommendation is for about every hour to hour and a half. Now, this is likely to depend on how you personally operate. Some people have shorter attention spans or longer tolerances for concentration. You have to manage this yourself, but even, but at the point that you get to when your brain feels like it's swimming, take a break. Even five minutes can help. Factor three, communicate. Let your needs be known to anyone who might be relevant. A major problem in, in information management is communication. It's one element that is usually lacking in both organizational and group settings. Miscommunication will slow information transfer and most information arrives to us via reports 
and in the context of issues management, we're often dealing with a lot of data from the news, social media, white papers, and the like. If you're missing a key piece of information and you can't find it, you need to let someone know. You just should start at working at your group level, and if they don't have it, expand. Facilitating good communication often means using memos or written emails. You're not the only one trying to manage information. In a busy work environment, people are often working on multiple projects under revolving deadlines, so a lot of the time it's just easier to get requests for information in writing, via email or in an old-fashioned way, a memo. That way people can deal with it when they have time. This gives you also a written record of the response that you can refer back to. Second, become a better listener. In meetings, there's always a lot of good information that's shared, discussions of where to find different pieces of information, and, and suggestions. Yet most people are actually really bad listeners because we're typically not in the moment. If you want to have a better record that you can remember, handwritten notes are the best way to go. Writing down notes will help you listen more attentively to the conversation and make for a much more accurate memory of yourself. Third, be courteous. Stress and deadlines often make us a bit sharp with one another. Add in the stress of having serious stakes at risk in issues management, and it's very easy to get right on each other's last nerves. Factor four, focus on the information that matters. Easier said than done, right? But first, be goal-focused. Keep in mind and list directly the objectives for the day, the session, even the next hour. If things come up that are interesting but not germane to the particular task you're doing, file them, note them, but leave them to one side. Second, avoid red herrings. There are a lot of topics that are relevant to any organization or different stakeholders, but that don't really help you accomplish the goals. Don't let yourself get sidetracked by things that aren't helping you in the particular task at the particular moment. Third, Recognize that scanning isn't analyzing. At this point in the process, you're not analyzing, you're just collecting and organizing information, creating lists of issues to be analyzed and prioritized. You're not getting into the weeds of it. The fifth factor then is about organizing the information effectively. And there are some good recommendations. First, use data reduction techniques. Very simply, try to group topics together very quickly. If you're just starting on a new issues management project, how would you begin? Begin to sort articles or information by categories. You can choose those categories based on the four types of environmental factors, the social, economic, regulatory, and competitor, or you may focus on a more organic process by grouping things into key topics. As you see topics repeated, write down the topics. Once you have a complete list of topics, then critically look at it to see what makes sense to group together. Second, make lists or trees of information. In the data reduction process, make sure that you keep your full list of information or make them more visual into information trees so that it's clear as you're combining information and topics that you show your work. This makes your approach to data reduction transparent and a lot clearer to other folks. Third, create a simple filing system with clear documentation. Make sure that you know what's where and that other people can find it as well. And then the sixth factor is don't become a part of the problem. When our brains are full and we're overloaded, we often share a lot of other information that contributes to the overall information problem. So when you provide information to others, a few practical tips. First, provide only the information needed. In an issues management process, scanning isn't about trying to impress other people by showing how clever or thorough you are. Communicate with those requesting information with quality, coherent, and a succinct piece of work. That'll impress people a lot more than some long and confusing report. Second, 
target your report to particular audiences. Sometimes you'll need multiple versions of the same report. It might be one for yourself, a two-page summary for your boss, and a one-page summary for their boss. Use information like images and graphs as much as possible to provide a clear, detailed data, but at a glance. Third, effective frequency of reporting. Deliver your reports on time and in a regular basis. That should be your goal. Some organizations will ask for issues management on a daily, weekly, sometimes even monthly or quarterly basis. Other times it might even be on an hourly basis. The most important aspect is that all the reports are delivered when they're needed and thoroughly on time. Most often when you come into an organization, there is already a system for scanning established. However, what should you do if you have to start it from scratch? Well, in the vein of managing information load, we need to start with a plan. This will probably have to change and adapt as you begin to customize it to the organization, but we want to make sure that you have a systematic approach to start with. Remember, what we are saying about in managing information load, if you build in this organization as an essential part of the scanning process, it makes it a lot easier. So the data reduction, making lists, and clear file systems will help not only organize the man and manage the information load, but it also is an effective part of creating an effective scanning plan. Next, make sure that the plan itself is replicable. That means that not only you can repeat the same thing day in, day out, but that others can be. So you want to make sure that there is some kind of a rationale for your approach. Then finally, you want to think about handing off files for monitoring. You may also be doing the monitoring, but you want to make sure that everything gets organized effectively first so that when you hand it off, it's a smooth handoff and the analysis section can, can occur. Now, how do we prioritize the information? Which sources? What should we prioritize? What should we care about? These are all examples of the types of information that you'll be getting during the, during the information management process, and especially the scanning part of it. So, the general recommendation is to put news story first. Why? Because it's what's happening now. The source of the news story could range from traditional to social media, but you always need to prioritize the most immediate issues and consider the severity in the, the context for that as well. If you think about this, about the scanning process overall as an information load process, about organizing and producing a replicable and effective process, then you end up with a much more effective approach to scanning. These sources give you some background and some further development for that.